right, thank you very much. So it is absolutely true that I'm going to talk to you today about something I'm interested in, something I'm pursuing, because I'm excited about it. And it's an area of science that I really enjoy. And I hope to share that excitement with you. And that is searching for a virus that populates our forests right here in North Carolina. Now, we encounter viruses in our daily lives in many different forms, but most commonly through a cold, perhaps, or a flu, an infection, vomiting, sickness. That's how we think about viruses. Some viruses are even more severe. Ebola virus. We all know that this, what that name means and the fear that it brings, right? This is a deadly human virus. But there are other viruses circulating around our world. There are viruses that infect many different things, including insects, for example. The bacula virus, shown behind me, has just infected this dead caterpillar. There are also viruses that infect plants. If you've ever been wandering through your yard and you noticed a tree or a tomato plant with a leaf that has discolorations, that might be a mosaic virus infecting that plant. We even know of viruses that infect bacteria, the smallest known living life form. These are bacteriophage. So there are many different types of viruses circulating in the world around us. The virus that I study is called ranavirus. This is a virus that infects frogs, amphibians, reptiles. And what we're looking at behind us is a representation, a colored representation of this virus. And to the, your right is a picture of the virus under a really very specific microscope, very sensitive microscope. Now this virus to frogs is about as bad as Ebola virus is to human, at least some frogs. Um, what we're looking at are die-off events that have occurred from infection of frogs with this virus. So this is a pretty serious infectious agent in these animals. Now, as we study ranavirus, the reason we're interested in this virus, particularly in North Carolina, is for a second, I'll have you use your imagination, pretend that you're out on a warm spring evening somewhere in North Carolina, you might hear something like the following. You might hear the voices of many of our native species, which includes 30 different frogs and toads. Now, those different species are very important to us. Not only do we have 30 different frogs and toads, but we have many different types of reptiles and amphibians. We also have one of the most diverse collections of salamanders in the world, particularly out in the Great Smoky Mountains. So we have a lot to protect when it comes to amphibians and reptiles. And that's why I'm interested in this virus. Now, I've started a project that's a collaboration um, between myself at the biotechnology program, as well as scientists here at the museum, um, also scientists in the uh, Wildlife Resource Commission at Duke University and at the University of North Carolina. And we surveyed across the entire state, collected specimens, and tried to sample to see where, if we could determine where this virus is present. Now, the way we performed this because you might ask, how do you survey for a virus that infects frogs? Well, we collected specimens, which means we went out and caught the frogs, or the reptiles and amphibians, and we swabbed those animals with a Q-tip-like instrument. Now this Q-tip, when we swab it, collects a small amount of maybe skin cells, but also any other agents that might be on that animal, such as the virus. Now we know if you can collect cells, if you can collect an agent, you can collect the DNA of that organism or that agent. And so we isolated DNA from those swabs and we analyzed that DNA to see if we could detect the virus DNA. And that was the way that we determined if this virus was present. And so across the state of North Carolina, we collected over 350 samples. And we're continuing to accumulate more as we go. And these purple dots that you see here represent 
the different sites from which we collected the uh, samples that we tested. Now the following map, the red dots, represent where we detected this virus. So ranavirus occurred pretty much spread throughout the state. I would say much more commonly than I expected it to be. So it appears that this virus is pretty abundant. Now this is one of the first statewide studies for this virus. So this is new information. We didn't know that this virus was circulating like this. Now what can we take away from this information? What have we learned from this study? Well one, we now have a better understanding of where this virus is and we can start thinking about how it might be moving through the environment. We also know that there are different susceptibilities in the species that we captured. Some species might be a carrier. So just like when you catch a cold, you can still go to work, you can still operate, and you fortuitously probably will infect a few other people. But a cold's not a bad infection in humans. Other species, other frogs, this virus is like Ebola virus. When they catch it, they die. And this virus can have mortality rates higher than Ebola virus in some species. So what we're trying to protect, what we're trying to prevent, is we want to identify where this virus is, we want to identify which species are most sensitive to this virus, and we want to try to prevent the spread of that virus to areas where it might affect those species. Now we're tackling this problem in several different ways. Educating the public, coming out and talking to you about it, like today. But also, surveying for the virus. The very study that we've performed, one of the first of its kind, hopefully will grow and will con continue to collect information. As well, this virus is so important that we started a global initiative, the Global Consortium on Ranaviruses. That's an information, if any of you are interested, you can follow up and learn more about what this virus is and what types of animals, what types of frogs and amphibians it infects. And of course, the overall goal of all of this work is to protect the animals and species that make our state so important and so unique. All the amphibians that we have, over the 30 species of frogs and many species of salamanders, we're trying to maintain those populations and keep them healthy. So with that, I'll take any questions you might have about the virus, but thank you for letting me share my work.